A very pleasant day, folks, and here is the latest update of ASEAN News with me, Vanessa. Malaysia's Prime Minister meets Sultan of Brunei during official visit. And the right of him, Prime Minister of Malaysia. Malaysia's Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim met Brunei's ruler Sultan Hassan al bolkiah during his visit to the Sultanate on Borne Island since being elected last year. The Malaysian Prime Minister told reporters, according to the state news agency Bernama, that Anwar and Sultan discussed border developments and investment between the two Southeast Asian neighbors. The two leaders also witnessed the signing of a memorandum of understanding between the country's state investment agencies. Anwar was appointed as Malaysia's 10th Prime Minister after a closely fought election in November last year. Hundreds of Malaysian protests burning of the Koran in Sweden. Hundreds of Malaysian Muslims gathered in front of the Swedish embassy in Kuala Lumpur protesting the burning of a copy of the Koran in Sweden. The Quran burning was carried out by Rasmus Paludan, leader of Danish far-right political party Hardline, outside the Turkish embassy in Stockholm. In the permit Paludan obtained from police, it says his protest was held against Islam and what it called Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan's attempt to influence freedom of expression in Sweden. Sweden and Finland applied to join NATO last year, but all 30 member states must approve their bids, including Turkey, who had said Sweden in particular must first take a clear stance against what it sees as terrorists, mainly Kurdish militants, and a group it blames for a 2016 coup attempt. Malaysia's protest is the latest in a series of outcries from other nations including Turkey, Jordan and Yemen. Chinese tourists receive warm welcome at Philippine Airport. More than 200 Chinese tourists arrived in Philippine capital Manila, receiving warm welcome by the country's Secretary of Tourism and Chinese Ambassador to the Philippines. Tourism Secretary Cristina Frasco and other officials prepared a fascinating local music performance and gifts for the long-awaited Chinese visitors at the Manila Airport. Crowds of Chinese tourists were surprised by the unexpected welcome ceremony, extending their love to the Philippine people. As a key economic driver, the tourism industry's contribution to the Philippines' gross domestic product stood at 12.7% in 2019. The Philippines received over 265 million foreign tourists in 2022, earning roughly 3.82 billion US dollars in revenue. And a happy Chinese New Year! The Southeast Asian country's target for 2023 is to lure some 4.8 million international visitors, with the Chinese tourist market remaining on its priority list. Earlier this month, an agreement to promote tourism cooperation between China and the Philippines was signed during a visit to China by Philippine President Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos. Former police chief says we will cooperate as International Criminal Court reopens Philippine drug war probe. A former police chief officer who oversaw then President Rodrigo Duterte's brutal anti narcotics crackdown in the Philippines said that he will cooperate with an International Criminal Court's investigation if the government decided to participate. An ICC probe into drug war killings and other suspected rights abuses in the Philippines was suspended in November 2021 at Manila's request after the country said it was implementing its own investigations and prosecutions. International Criminal Court judges approved its prosecutor's request to reopen the investigation, saying in a statement it was not satisfied that the Philippines is undertaking relevant investigations that would warrant a deferral of the investigation. Duterte's deadly war on drugs has been blamed for the deaths of more than 6,200 people, mostly small-time drug dealers. There was no immediate comment from the office of the President, Ferdinand Marcos, and the Justice Ministry. Marcos in August said he had no intention of rejoining the ICC after Duterte, whose daughter is the country's current vice president, pulled out of the court in 2019. Duterte said at the time the ICC had no right to meddle in his country's affairs. Alleged mastermind auto robberies in Japan being detained in the Philippines immigration.
According to media reports, a Japanese citizen was found to have ordered a series of burglaries in Japan while detained in the Philippines immigration facility. Kyoto News reported, quoting the Justice Minister, the ringle leader, who is known by the name Luffy, has been in the Philippines immigration facility after he was arrested in 2021. Authorities said Luffy ordered the robberies on encrypted messaging application Telegram while incarcerated. Nippon Television Network reported that the person was likely responsible for ordering burglaries in Tokyo suburbs, in Tokyo's Nakano Ward, and in Hiroshima in late 2022. <laughs> Japan Times said other robberies in Osaka, Kyoto, and Yamaguchi were also connected. Increasing Chinese tourists driving the fast recovery of Thailand tourism and economic growth. The increase in Chinese tourists has led to rapid recovery of tourism and economic development in Thailand, speeding up the realization of Thai government's economic and tourism recovery goals. During his spring festival holiday, Thailand welcomed Chinese tourists with great enthusiasm by holding a series of light shows, firework shows and song and dance performances with the theme of celebrating the Chinese New Year. Major shopping malls around the country installed rabbit-shaped decorations and held exhibitions of Chinese products. Bangkok Chinatown has become the most active tourist and consumption area during the spring festival period. The Tourism Authority of Thailand expected the world to be 1.38 million domestic tourists during the 2023 Spring Festival holiday. According to the study by the University of the Thai Chamber of Commerce, Spring Festival consumption has boosted Thailand post-epidemic economic recovery, with total consumer spending expected to reach 45 billion baht or 1.37 billion US dollars. Tourism is one of Thailand's pillar industries, and cooperative tourism projects are an important part of China Thailand cooperation. Thai government officials went to the airport to welcome Chinese tourists who came to Thailand after China's improved epidemic prevention measures. South Koreans worry over soaring energy bills amid prolonged cold wave. South Korean residents expressed concern over additional hikes in energy bills as the freezing winter weather continued. I know it's colder than last year, but heating bills have gone up by 50% from last year. Bang Myung Son, small hardware shop owner, said she was shocked by the hike in her shop and household heating bills, and she even wears a puffer jacket at home to save on cost. South Korea's top presidential economic secretary, Choi Sang Mok, said the government plans to double energy voucher and expand a discount of gas prices for underprivileged families to help them cope with spiraling heating bills amid a prolonged cold wave. Choi added that, citing a near tenfold growth in global natural gas prices since 2021. According to the Interior Ministry, that the weather agency issued a heavy snow advisory on Thursday in Greater Seoul area and some eastern and central regions, prompting the last five flights to be called off and several national parks to shut down. Residents hope for development after blaze in South Korea's shanty town. South Korean residents of Ashanti Town, an apartment block in Gangnam, destroyed by a blaze, they hoped for a local development in the wake of the fire. Flames swept through part of the town, destroying 60 homes, many constructed from cardboard and wood, and forcing the evacuation of around 500 people. Emergency services took five hours to put out the blaze, which erupted before daybreak in Guryong village. A slum that lies just across the highway from Seoul's affluent Gangnam district, officials said no casualties were reported so far. Home to around 1,000 people, Guryong is one of the last remaining shanty towns in the capital and has become a symbol of inequality in Asia's fourth largest economy. Located at the southern end of the Gangnam district, Guryong village is the largest cluster of unlicensed makeshift homes in Seoul. 
the government had unveiled plans for redevelopment and relocation after a huge fire in late 2014, but those efforts have made little progress amid the decades of long tug of war between landowners, residents and authorities. Thank you for today's program. Enjoy your weekdays ahead. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you.